All right. Well, uh, welcome everybody to uh, the podcast. And uh, today uh, uh, we're, we're happy to have Tom Law. And I'll do a brief introduction for Tom. Um, he's the managing editor of ST Publishing Inc. And most of you, I'm sure, know Tom because of his work on the Saratoga Special. Uh, he's a writer for the special. It's a horse racing newspaper available at the track on Wednesdays and Saturdays this season. Uh, and also during, I think, I believe it, Tom, every day during the, uh, the, the uh, sales. Um, uh, Tom is uh, an Eclipse Award winning turf writer, tw I think twice. Uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong. That's right. Yeah. Uh, most recently for his story, Big Tally, about early voting's 2022 Preakness win uh, for Chad Brown. So, Tom, welcome to the podcast. And uh, thanks for having me. It's uh, great to be with you guys again. And uh, we're ready. We're off and running here at Saratoga. It's been great, uh, great couple of days. Well, I'd like to start with with yesterday opening day. And I'm sure that you had the winner of the Schuylerville yeah. uh, at uh, ninety one dollar <laughs> horse. I think uh, probably probably you played that. And uh, uh, that was that was an upset <laughs> to be sure. Indeed. Uh, I, I would like to talk about yesterday a little bit, but maybe we could start with this with the Schuylerville and whether uh, you had any impressions there and then on to uh, anything you want to say about opening day. Yeah, obviously a very uh, strange race. Uh, you know, a lot of weird stuff happened. You know, uh, Javier Castellano, uh, his, his mount reared kind of at the start. Uh, so he ended up getting dumped at the gate. Then you had another horse pulled up, and that horse ended up uh, losing the rider uh, kind of after the race. And then uh, all along as uh, the Queen's MG, uh, as you mentioned, the big, huge price, uh, you know, <laughs> blew the blew the blew the field away um you know she was she was favored last time in the Astoria which is a race right here at Saratoga so obviously a horse that uh was well meant a horse that you know people liked um you know completely completely dismissed off her her run in the Astoria which was a, just kind of a no show up kind of race I mean she had a little bit of trouble in there and bumped at the start herself but um you know it's, this is uh it's, it was quintessential Saratoga to me uh, you know, weird stuff happens. It's been happening here for 150 plus years and, uh, it continues. Um, but, uh, all in all, you know, a good, uh, a good day at the races, you know, they lost the, they lost the turf races, unfortunately, because of the rain, but, uh, you know, a wise move not to, to try to run on it or try to run any races on it, yeah. chew it up a little bit early in the meet as, uh, you know, as they've done in the past and had some problems with the turf course then. So hopefully we'll, uh, you know, we're on the grass today, which is, uh, Friday, second day of the meet. So a uh, nice kind of sunny day right now. Been pretty warm. So hopefully it dried out pretty well. So it should be in good shape. And, and I think the Saturday looks pretty good too. Uh, yeah. On, at least that's what my iPhone tells me for the Diana yeah. and the Sanford on uh, on Saturday. And yeah. and even next week, uh, you know, after last year, we're, we're all nervous mm -hmm. about the rain. And uh, uh, I was happy yesterday to see, at least as far as I know, that it was a safe uh, day. Yeah, um, for sure. I was a little worried about the Schuylerville, but from what I read, both of those horses came out of it okay. Yeah, that's um, good. Yeah, the one horse got taken off in the ambulance, but uh, more precautionary than anything. So uh, that's good uh, Good news that uh, they came out good and hopefully back back for another day. Yeah. Well, I'll hold up my copy of the Saratoga special here that I All picked right. up uh, yeah. uh, at the racetrack. Uh, you got yesterday. some autographs on it there? What do you got there? Uh, notes. Uh, uh, notes good, guess, but you have some notes. Uh, uh, it is it is a free publication, which uh, is important uh, to me. But um, um, Tom, anything that you you, you want to say about the the sure. special uh, this year in terms of what we can look for? Yeah. In terms of features, I, I looked at it closely, and I, I liked your article with Jake uh, Joe Clancy uh, talking about the beginning of the meet and what yeah. makes saratoga special the the barn tour with with todd pletcher was really informative for me uh, uh 38 horses we were detailed actually is that what it was i didn't count that i'm glad no, you it was. That. Uh, was that your article or who or that must yeah be i did that so uh todd I, you know todd's been great to us over the years uh gives us 
very generous with his time, uh, no matter what we're doing. But we've kind of become an annual tradition where we, we hit him up early. I got in touch with him, I think, a couple weeks ago, really, about it. We set it up, and then we did the interview on uh, Monday. I went over there Monday afternoon. It was just him in his office, just he and I. Uh, of course, his help was outside tending to the horses and stuff. So he's over on the Oklahoma. And uh, it was like Monday afternoon. It was, it was you know, hot day. We just sat in the air conditioning and, and went through all the horses. And, um, you know, it was I was there an hour plus, I would say, uh, just talking about his horses. I, I basically came up with I always prepare a list um which i have like a a list of all the horses that end up being like three pages so like you said it was it was 38 38 horses so um at the end i always say did i miss anybody and uh, he kind of looks at me and he says uh no i think you got them all and then i i said what about some you got some good two-year-olds and he just says you know he's 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 coy right so he's like uh hopefully <laughs> i said well i mean give me some and he's kind of like yeah there's a few entered over the next few days uh but uh yeah phasing tipton uh came up with the and, and and sean clancy came up with kind of the concept a couple of years ago uh to to do the stable tour you know we kind of dovetailed off uh, the Racing Post does a, a, a really good, thorough uh, stable tour over there in Europe uh, that we enjoyed, and we sort of copied their model. And um, the trainers have been great about it, the, the guys that we've really good established relationships with, and it really has helped the relationship as well. Um, you know, I've gotten to know some guys, uh, you know, pretty well, just kind of doing the tour with them. And, uh, you know, every, every trainer does it different. Some guys will go stall by stall. We'll go outside. We'll, you know, Bill Mott will get right in the stalls sometimes with the horses and kind of talk about them. Other guys, they'll sit at their office and kind of go through their notes and, and, you know, some guys do a little bit of both. So it's, uh, it's been great. It's, it's, it takes a while. Um, as you might, uh, as you might guess, the interview itself is probably the shortest part, but then researching the horses. You know, we know, we know, we all know about fierceness and Candide and Leslie Rose, but uh, the the more obscure horses sometimes take a while. And then sometimes yeah. we do it with trainers where you don't might not necessarily know the horses, and, and they give you names, and you're like, oh sure, sure, and you write it down. You get back to the office, you pull up Equibase, and you're like, I can't find this horse's name. So then, <laughs> then there's a lot of follow up. I'm texting, you know, Jeremiah Engelhart, like, what's your owner's name again? You know, I get all kinds of you want to you want to get all those people in there too. So. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. You mentioned the the piece that Joe and I did for opening day. That was really Joe's idea. Um, he was talking to a few people down in Maryland, actually, about Saratoga. And I said to him, I've been talking to some people about what Saratoga means to them, too. Let's combine what we have. And uh, that was the result. Uh, talking to Sean yesterday and Joe, we both said we could probably do one of those stories every single day of the meet, to be honest yeah. with you. Like, you, we could just find a handful of people you know it could even be fans it could be jockeys trainers owners everybody kind of has some cool stories and some unique takes on on what makes the place special and yeah. you know we're just happy to kind of be the messengers to to tell that story but uh yeah so we'll have more of that kind of stuff coming up this season um we got uh we got a great uh staff in place uh several newcomers to the staff but young and enthusiastic uh college students journalism students uh interested in racing uh, interested in kind of furthering their careers, kind of trying to figure it out like we do every year. Um, but this year's group is a little larger, which is nice. So it's going to allow us to expand some of our coverage and how we do things. Um, we're going to roll out a uh, what we're going to call the Sunday Extra Special. Uh, it's going to be a Sunday digital uh, version of the Saratoga Special. So it won't be printed, but it'll go to, uh, to members of our Readers Club, uh, which is kind of a a program we started a couple of years ago. So the Sunday Readers Club, uh, Sunday Sunday Extra Special will go to the Readers Club members um, where they can, you know, get get the usual content that you expect in the special. Uh, coverage of Saturday's races, maybe a little stable tour, uh, picks for Sunday, uh, a preview of the Sunday's races, maybe a column or two from both our staff or maybe Sean or Joe or myself. Uh -huh. um, just kind of unique content. We found a need to, we want to like, make sure we cover stuff that happens on Saturday more immediately. Right. You know, people want to know, I mean, we're yep. still going to do the same kind of longer form recap type stuff in the Wednesday paper uh -huh. from the weekends races. So our readers can still expect that. Uh, but this Sunday edition will be, it's a real good, I think it's going to be a real good perk. We've seen some good response already from people signing up for the readers club, hopefully because they're like, Oh, I can't wait to get that. 
Uh, <laughs> so now we got to deliver. We got, uh, mm -hmm. I guess we got two days to go to get it done. And uh, uh, we're confident though. We got a good plan in place. So there'll be seven Sundays throughout the meet. Okay. Uh, the Sunday edition, uh, the day before the Saratoga yearling sale, uh, we'll have a printed edition that day. So as you, as you mentioned, we do six, six straight days of papers from uh, that Friday Hall of Fame day through the Wednesday after the, after the yearling sale. So that gets us to 20 issues for the season with the Wednesday, Saturday schedule. But we had a, we had yesterday, which was Thursday, but two, well, two papers a week uh, with the right. exception of that stretch um, around the sales. And, and, and I guess in the regular uh, print editions of, of, of the newspapers, there are five handicappers that give daily Correct. selections. You are one of the handicappers. I am. Yeah. I only had two yesterday. winners yesterday uh, <laughs> out of are 11. You? My, uh, my colleague, lead, Sean, think, uh, not in the lead, no. And uh, John Chapazian, who quite often is the leading handicapper in the area, um, he only had two as well. Uh, Rob Whitlock is a guy that's been doing it with us for several years now. He had four, actually, wow. and uh, he had a, a real good positive ROI of uh, 20, like 20 bucks for the first yeah. day. Um, we're going to keep track of the ROI this year. Okay. Uh, we've been asked by, by our readers, like, you know, picking the winners is nice, but like, are you guys making any money? So yeah. hopefully it doesn't make us look terrible. Um, there are years when I have some pretty dismal handicapping performances. Quite often they're at the beginning of the meet because I'm dealing with a lot of, not making excuses, but I'm dealing with a lot of logistics with involving setting up the office and doing different things. And as you can see in my, behind me, I got boxes stacked up of uh, Reader's Club giveaway items. and yeah. um, But things have settled down now. And the Belmont here helped a lot because we set up the office uh, for that and uh, we kept it open. We kind of kept working out of the office here in that month in between. So I'm not saying the wrinkles are totally uh, smoothed out, but uh, for the most part, they are. Okay. All right. Good. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, well, we're coming off a, a a very successful Belmont at at Saratoga, and it seems people aren't tired of speaking about that yet. So let's just do a minute on uh, sure uh, impressions and. Uh, what horse uh, there were so many great races and so many uh yeah. great horses that day uh what horse are you looking forward to running back at the uh mm. start well I, I i was reading some of the reports it sounded like national treasure might be coming back for the whitney uh along with post time they were one two in the in the met mile uh mm -hmm. here that'd be fun you know to see it's always good to see those horses kind of stretch out a little longer national treasure of course won the preakness so he, he could come back from california uh, looking forward to Didia as well. She won the New York Stakes on uh, the Friday before the Belmont. She's running Saturday's Diana against a whole bunch of Chad Brown horses. That uh, mm -hmm. that should be a good test for her. She's 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 fun. Uh, her trainer Nacho Correa is a great guy. Kind of a lot of people root for him. Um, except, you know, Bookham Dano uh, who won the the Woody Stevens. You know, I'd expect to see him in the Alan Jerkins. Hopefully, yep. um, Derek Ryan, his trainer, has kind of been starting to tighten the screws back on him again. So he'll be, he could show up even before that, maybe in the Amsterdam here. Um, he's hinted at maybe running him on the grass. So that could be exciting. Um, yeah. The Belmont was fun. You know, it was, it was great. Um, you know, I, I love Belmont park. I, I've been many times. This is my 30th Belmont stakes uh, as a reporter. I've been many times as a fan, even before that. Uh, so I, you know, great memories of it. Now I, now I have a new one I'm right here in my, hometown i didn't have to i didn't have to go over the throgs neck bridge to get there or i uh yeah. <laughs> or go to penn station on the amtrak so uh it was nice to to have it here and it'll be nice to have it here next year too and, and speaking of belmont park uh what can you tell us about the reconstruction how it's yeah. going and i'm a little bit uncertain myself about what the facility is going to to look like and and how it can be expanded for big race days and you could just tell us about that please. yeah so the facility itself is uh so the old grandstand is completely gone now it's down to the ground uh, everything's gone um and they haven't they have yet they probably got to do some site cleanup and site preparation get it ready for construction of the new grandstand and clubhouse which is going to be a lot smaller than the old version but more modern some people have likened it to like looking like uh you know the detroit uh detroit air airport terminals <laughs> so it's very modern like facility a lot of glass you know maybe similar to something you might see at maidan in dubai uh from what some people have said uh but and smaller but on big days i think they they have the capability and they have all that space down there 
to have uh, temporary structures, uh, additional structures. You know, I've been to the Breeders' Cup many times where at Lone Star or Arlington Park or Monmouth Park where they put up a lot of sort of uh, separate stands and separate yep. structures, sort of like something you'd see at the U.S. Open golf tournaments and things like that uh, to, to really expand and have some really cool like VIP type areas. So I would expect they would be able to do something like that. Um, you know, we'll see if they get it done in time for 2026. Kind of that's their goal. You know, you know how construction projects go, you know, whether it's it could be an addition on your house or a, a new yeah. building, you right. know, there's probably going to be delays, you know, weather and just, you know, timing and just natural things that happen. Uh, so we'll see. You know, they're they're optimistic, I think, that they can get done to run that 26 Belmont. People were so excited about Belmont on Saratoga that there were suggestions that, well, let's just keep the Belmont stakes at Saratoga. And not only that, but we'll have the Breeders' Cup at yeah. Saratoga also. I don't see that whole happening, but maybe may, maybe you can help us out on that. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think for, for racing's sake, uh, you know, we need a healthy – uh, a healthy Belmont Park. We need a strong Belmont Park. We need a so so the Belmont Stakes in Saratoga all the time. To me, doesn't really make a lot of sense. We already have a strong Saratoga. We need stronger. Other, we need other racetracks to be stronger. We need a good Belmont. We need other race. We need racetracks to a not close. We need to keep other racetracks going, uh, even the small tracks to to foster new fans, new participants in the game. You know, there's so many trainers and jockeys and stuff that got their start at a lot of small tracks. So I'm off tangent a little bit, but the, you know, a, a healthy Belmont Park is really good for New York racing. You know, Saratoga should not have to carry the load for the entire state and really the entire industry for that matter. So as far as the Breeders' Cup here, I've always said, and maybe I'm a little bit different, I've always said they should just run the Breeders' Cup here like in September. Um, just change the schedule a little bit. I mean, racing's changed through the years. Uh, you know, run the run the Breeders' Cup in in mid September or late September, and then maybe maybe you'd bring an emphasis back on some of the fall racing uh, mm -hmm. that has really changed dramatically since the Breeders' Cup has come about, and continues to change really dramatically because a lot of horses will run like say at Saratoga on Travers weekend, Labor Day weekend, and they won't run again until the Breeders' Cup. So that's sort of like decimated a lot of fall races around the country. So say you run the Breeders' Cup in September, run it Labor Day weekend even. I don't know. You you're just changing the schedule of racing a little bit, and then maybe you'd see a, a, a more productive racing schedule in the fall. Um, I don't know. It's a dramatic idea. I don't, you, know, you obviously can't do it um, in late October or November here in Saratoga, it just, you know, there are days when it's beautiful and you're like, this would be great. But, you know, you got to remember the mornings, uh, you know, horses are coming from all over the country and you, you could deal with 30 degree mornings and the, the facility is just not prepared for that. Um, you know, there's not a lot of indoor areas here at Saratoga. And that's really the whole reason why they renovated Belmont was to have more indoor type spaces in case of inclement weather. I've been to the Breeders' Cup at, at cold weather places and it's uh <laughs> it's cold, you know, and you're happy for the for to be inside. Did you go to Chicago uh for the Breeders' Cup? I did. Cup? Yeah, I was there. Yeah. That was, that was chilly. Um, yes, it was. It was. Uh, not in Irish and, and, Yeah, I've been everywhere. This is my last um yeah point on uh the new Belmont uh downstate, but uh they've announced that the synthetic track will be used exclusively for winter racing. Of course, it wouldn't be New York if it weren't controversy Correct. about that. Uh, Mike Rapoli's unhappy. Uh, but I read last night, um, uh, Mr. Attard, the trainer from Woodbine, uh, said that it would fit uh, his program pretty well. And he's considering going to New York instead of Florida. Any any mm -hmm. thoughts about the synthetic track? I saw that. Yeah. Well, it's funny. You know, racing is, as you mentioned, it wouldn't be New York if it wasn't controversy or it wouldn't be horse racing if there wasn't controversy. You know, after all the stuff we dealt with last year, you know, horses getting hurt and kind of like headlines about breakdowns and safe racing services, everyone under the sun was like, we need safer tracks. We need this. We need synthetic racing. Then N New York, makes a, a difficult decision. There are no easy answers in the sport of racing quite often. They make the decision, look, we're going to put in a synthetic track because we feel, A, we can run on it in the weather, and B, because it's safer. Isn't that what everybody wanted? And then, and now they don't. So we just want it somewhere else? Like, yeah. is it a not-in-my-backyard type deal? You know, I mean, I would have liked to seen maybe if they had sort of a dirt surface and a synthetic surface that they could use in the winter. 
um, just for a variety state sake, you know, and there, and there are horses that certainly favor dirt racing. You know, they've had safe dirt tracks in the winter before, um, and you don't necessarily have to use it all the time. It's kind of like a Gulf Stream does. They have a synthetic surface that they use and yeah. uh, kind of almost in, in place of turf uh, in the in most of the year or parts of the year just to kind of protect their turf course because it's a year round racetrack. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's different, you know, it's, uh, you know, everything in horse racing change is very hard for, for horse racing, it seems, but, uh, you know, not unlike a lot of sports, you know, I think, uh, you know, we, we look at ourselves, uh, pretty closely and maybe critically sometimes, but you know, we're not all that different than a lot of sports, yeah. you know, baseball and, True. Uh, uh, lots of things, you know, haven't changed much over the years. So we're not the only ones that don't change. Well, if we could shift to uh, just two more topics, uh, sure. three-year-old Colts, and then also uh, we should talk about the Diana for a, a minute. I'm interested in getting your pick, and I'll even give a pick yeah. for, for that matter for what it's worth. But uh, the three-year-old Colt um, uh, situation, we've got the Haskell coming up a week from tomorrow. Uh, and then at Saratoga, we've got the We've got the Curlin. We've got the Jim Dandy. Um, yeah. I, would you say that Mystic Dan is the leader in the clubhouse right now? Um, I would. Yeah. But I mean, you know, shake out. Um, win in the Derby, uh, you know, is the that's the that's the big prize, you know, um, and uh, and and then running back really well in the Preakness. You know, he loses to seize the gray. Uh, who ran a, a, a good race and he's got a chance at it as well. The door knock, I guess is, is in the hunt, you know, the Belmont being a mile and a quarter. I think maybe people are like, Oh, you know, a mile and a quarter. It's not like a kind of a freaky fluky distance, like the old, uh, the, the, the real Belmont stakes, the mile and a half Belmont stakes. So they're all in the mix, you know, I mean, Sierra Leone is going to try to probably put his name in there too. Um, you know, and, and fierceness as well, you know, last year's champion. Uh, as you read in the in the uh, stable tour with Todd Pletcher, he's, he he could run three three horses in the Haskell yeah. uh, next weekend. I, I got the sense just talking to him that he didn't want to just to run all three against each other because no matter what, two of them are going to lose. Uh, but Mind Frame is another one that uh, you know I could see Mind Frame maybe being in there and maybe you bring Fierceness and run here in, at Saratoga. And he's run well here before, but you know that would be, just be a guess. Um, you know, but. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's shaping up as a pretty good. Uh, you know, it's it's wide open. I think. You know, it's it's for anyone for the taking. You know, I think if if sees the gray or Sierra Leone or Doorknock or Fierceness were to say win the Haskell or Travers, you know, then we're really in a in a tough spot when it comes time to vote for the Eclipse Awards for sure. I I got the impression from what I read this morning that uh, um, Fierceness may not go in the in the Travers and and may take a different route and and end up in the Pennsylvania Derby yeah. on twenty first. So who knows? We'll, we'll we'll have to see about that. Um, yeah. um, let's turn to the Diana mm -hmm. and uh, great race uh, cool. field of ten. Outstanding, yeah. Five chads. Um, <laughs> is it as simple as which chad do you like, or is it more complicated than that? Do you think? No, I think it's more complicated than that. You know, I mean, Diddy is the horse. Uh, the, I think I think the horse will beat. Uh, you know, she beat him in the New York. Obviously, she's shortening up uh, from that mile, a mile and three sixteenths to a mile and eighth in the Diana. Um, and I also think uh, uh, the Canadian filly Moira. You mentioned Kevin yeah. Attard earlier. Yeah. Uh, she's you know she's a, a serious horse up from up there in Canada. You know, runs in these Grade One races and and shows a, a good account of herself. She has it ever since she was a three year old. And then uh, Graham Motion, he's kind of been snake bit in the Diana for many years. He's the second a lot of times. I know, I know, he's really hoping to break through, and he almost like avoided the race in the last few years. But he's back with uh, Mission of Joy in there too. So, you know, obviously, Chad's horses are going to be tough um, as they often are. White Beam is back to defend her title. Um, you know, she hasn't she hasn't won uh, this year, but she's top class. Um, nice. You know, and uh, and his others, you know, uh, Chili Flag and and uh, Fluffy Socks runs her race. You know, pretty durable horse. You know, Fluffy yep. Socks, six, six year old mare, and still going. So, but uh, I'm picking Didia. Uh, maybe a sentimental pick because Nacho Correa's is a buddy of mine. But uh, you know, I liked her last race, and I picked her there too, which was good. Okay. All right, yeah. great. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just mention White Beam and Coppice. Mm -hmm. uh, the other Chads, uh, uh, maybe not as famous as uh, 
uh, some of the other ones that he has, but I'm going to use those in my my uh, uh, vertical picks. Um, and before we close, I should just mention the Sanford uh, because yeah. we get Fierce's full brother, yeah. mentee mm -hmm. in, in, in the Sanford. Uh, he was impressive winning at uh, uh, Belmont at Aqueduct, so it'll be fun to see what he can do from the one hole. Absolutely. And he stretches out an extra half furlong, too. That'll be interesting. Yeah, I was kind of gearing him down at the end. You know, Johnny was knew he had to race one, I think. And uh, Colloquial is a nice horse that they a lot of people were highly, you know, they he was highly regarded going in. And uh, yeah, Mentee post one. Uh, we'll see what he does from there. But uh, good field, you know. Studley Do writes in there, and uh, yeah. Steve yeah. Asmussen's running three echoes back, and uh, some other new shooters too. Uh, Jeremiah Engelhart's got a horse from the outside, a New York bred Moplex, uh, who could give him some trouble too. So. Yeah, good race. Proper, proper, as Steve Asmussen would say, it's a proper Saratoga graded stakes. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Well, fifteen minutes uh, with Tom Law turned out to be twenty eight minutes. <laughs> That's with my Tom fault. Law, but uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it, Tom. Thanks very much for coming on and uh, yeah, and and being with us. And we'll all pick up the uh, Saratoga special. I'm gonna hold it up one more time. That's right. Uh, when we're at the. Uh, at the racetrack. So at the track, you can get it all over town. You can get it on our website. This is horseracing.com. And there you go. There you go. All right. Thanks again. See you at the track. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye.